Assalamualaikum everyone, yes I'm back with a new video. In today's video, I'll be making slime using old markers. So, get your gloves on and let's get started. So here are all my markers in this plastic, reusable, resealable zipper storage bags. Don't you just love these bags? Okay, we're getting off topic. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, the markers. Now here are the markers. You can see I have a lot of them, but they are almost drying out. I'm going to use these to color slimes. Now let's choose a marker to dissect. Hmm, which one should I choose? Uh-oh, it's the purple one. Now we are going to remove the ink points of this marker, whatever that means. Please wear gloves for this process. Here I'm taking a needle nose plier, and with this, what are we going to do? We're going to go to the bottom of the marker. We're going to stick that needle nose plier up, clench the bottom cap, and then we pull away. The bottom part should just come off. For some markers, it's easier to do. For some markers, it's really difficult. But either way, it will get the job done. When you look inside, you will notice a tube of ink. This is just the filament. This is what we're going to be using to color our slimes. And also, we're going to be using the tip of the markers. You can use ready-made slimes from the store, or you can make your own. I'm going to make my own, so let's go do that. Oh my god, what, is th what does that say? That says dermatologist tested. I wonder who is the poor dermatologist that it was tested on. Here is the secret ingredient. Yes, Tide Free and Gentle is a powerful hyperallergenic laundry detergent that is free of dyes and perfumes. Now this Tide is very powerful. Do not use this directly on glue. The glue will clump faster than you can say no. I diluted it with a bit of water. Mix that very well where you have the soapy bubbles on top. Clear liquid Tide activator is ready. Now you have to get rid of the soapy bubbles on top. Get rid of them. Get rid of them some more. And again. And again. Removing the soapy bubbles. Almost done. Soapy bubbles have been removed. Take any good quality clear PVA glue. This is very important. Use any brand that's really good quality. Now the clear tide activator that we made, we're not going to use all of it. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of the activator. There goes the first tablespoon, followed by the second one. I'm going to take a popsicle stick and I'm going to gently stir this around. And as soon as you add it, you can see that the glue is clumping together. And then I'm going to mix it. And the bubbles will form, but not too much. And it doesn't get cloudy. After this, I'm just going to place it in a container and leave it out for the bubbles to go. Now, this is a small batch, so the bubbles will disappear very quickly. It looks like there's nothing in it, right? Wrong! There's clear slime in it. Here I'm using the tip of the marker, same way you have to remove it using the needle nose plier. Please wear gloves because this will stain your hands. As you can see, the tip is wet because I soaked it in a bit of borax solution. Do that and it will also help your slime be nice and firm. Okay, what am I doing here? I am kneading the slime. So what happens here is that this will help all the ingredients to combine better because we have made the slime and it helps it carry out its chemical reactions. Press the slime with your hands and fingers, stretch it out, form it back into a ball and press it out again. Continue doing this until your slime feels less sticky and you will also see the colors being uniformly distributed in the slime. Purple is done. On to the other ones. There's so many to do. So here you see all of the colors done from the markers. It is so easy to do. Just remove the felt ink cartridge from the markers I've already shown you previously. Just use a pair of skinny needle nose pliers. Take out the felt ink cartridge and get busy coloring all those slimes. The great thing about using marker ink is you get to decide how much intensity the color should be. Looking at all this plastic from the marker, from the Ziploc bags, and even inside the marker, it made me just think about recycling. So, today's topic will be recycling. Recycling is a pretty simple concept. Take something that isn't useful anymore and make it into something new instead of just throwing it away. It can be anything from recycling old paper into new paper to making an old hubcap into a decorative bird bath. In reality, recycling can get pretty complex. How it interacts with our environment, our politics, our economy, and even our human behavior patterns 
will play a major role in the future of our planet. So in this article, we'll look at what recycling is, why and how it works. But first of all, what is recycling? Recycling can take many forms on a small scale anytime you find a new use for something old, you're recycling. So right now we're just recycling because we're using the markers to make colored slime. Recycling becomes more important on larger scales. At this level, used consumer goods are collected, converted back into raw materials, and remade into new consumer products. Aluminum cans, office paper, steel from old buildings, and plastic containers are all examples of materials commonly recycled in large quantities often through municipal programs encouraging bulk household collections. It's rare for a recycled product to be exactly the same as the original material from which it was recycled. Recycled paper, for example, contains ink residue and has shorter fibers than virgin paper, paper made from wood pulp. Because of this, it may be less desirable for some purposes, such as paper used in a copy machine. When a recycled good is cheaper or weaker than the original product, it's known as downcycling or downstream recycling. Eventually, goods move so far down the recycling stream, it isn't feasible to recycle them any further. After being recycled a few times, paper is no longer usable. In some cases, goods can be upcycled, made into something more valuable than the original product. An example of this is a company making upcycled artistic furniture pieces out of old newspapers and aluminum cans. Let's talk about some recycling history. Although recycling may seem like a modern concept introduced with the environmental movement of the 1970s, it's actually been around for thousands of years. Prior to the industrial age, you couldn't make goods quickly and cheaply, so virtually everyone practiced recycling in some form. However, large-scale recycling programs were very rare. Households predominantly practiced recycling. The mass production of the industrial age is, in many ways, the very reason we need to worry about large-scale recycling. When products can be produced and purchased very cheaply, it often makes more economic sense to simply throw away old items and purchase brand new ones. However, this culture of disposable goods created a number of environmental problems. So let's talk about the benefits of recycling. Most of the reasons we recycle are environmental, although there are some economical aspects as well. Now these include too much garbage. One of the main reasons for recycling is to reduce the amount of garbage sent to landfills. Even though modern sanitary landfills are safer and less of a nuisance than the open dumps of the past, no one likes having a landfill around. In heavily populated areas, landfill space is scarce. Where space is plentiful, filling it with garbage isn't a very good solution to the problem. With recycling efforts, this prevents garbage ending up in landfills every year. Landfills cause another problem in addition to taking up lots of space. The assortment of chemicals thrown into landfills plus the chemicals that result when garbage breaks down and blends into a toxic soup known as leachate creates huge amounts of pollution. Leachate can drain out of the landfill and contaminate groundwater supplies. Today, impermeable clay caps and plastic sheeting prevent much of this runoff, making the landfill much safer than they were just a few decades ago. New goods use up resources. Making a brand new product without any recycled material causes natural resources to deplete in the manufacturing process. Paper uses wood pulp from trees, while the manufacture of plastic requires the use of fossil fuels like oil and natural gas. Making something from recycled materials means using fewer natural resources. Recycling sometimes uses less energy. There's room for debate on this aspect of recycling, but many recycling processes require less energy than it would take to manufacture the same item brand new. Manufacturing plastic is very inexpensive and some plastic goods can be difficult to recycle efficiently. In those cases, the recycling process probably takes more energy. It can be difficult to weigh all the energy costs along the entire chain of production. Energy use is a factor weighed on a case-by-case -case basis. Recycling has a variety of economic impacts for the companies that buy used goods, recycle them, and resell new products. Recycling is a source of their income. Almost anything can be recycled, but certain things are more common and more popular for recycling, which are paper, glass, steel, plastics, cans, electronics, old bricks, clay pots, yes, even stale bread. Just a way of turning trash into cash. So everyone, if you really enjoyed watching this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, 
press the bell icon so you're notified of any future videos that I might post. Leave a constructive comment and share this video. I'll really appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for your support and encouragement. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Allah Hafiz. Bye. Jazakallah khair, thank you so much for watching till the end of this video. If you want to watch similar videos, please check out the playlist right here. Check it out.